All right, planet, ocean, um, tides are changing is the theme for World Ocean Day 2023. Now, the, UN, the UN is um, joining forces with decision makers, indigenous leaders, scientists, private sector executives, civil society, celebrities, and youth act, uh, activists to put the, um, the ocean first. World Ocean Day reminds everyone of the major role the ocean have in everyday life. They are the lung of our planet and a major source of food and medicine and a critical part of the biosphere. It's so interesting we're discussing flooding and today is World Ocean Day. How coincidental. <laughs> Honestly, it wasn't planned. Uzi, you want to come in? <laughs> That's a really big coincidence right there. <laughs> no, really. I literally yeah. did not know today was World Ocean Day. Um, <laughs> it was the suffering of uh, Magboro people that I said, uh, uh, this is too much. Let's discuss. Um, but yeah. hey, I, I think um, different um, environmental specialists have come out to say that you know the rate we're going as a people, if we do not pay attention to what we're doing today, right? In the very near future, right, you would we would have a very big problem in our hands. Mm -hmm. I've seen different videos, especially I think on Business Insider in India, in different places where you see massive chunks of you know plastic going into the ocean. Like every every body that knows, they always say these things, but I still don't understand why. We don't, you know, just, we're not paying attention to it. Maybe because it's the thing, okay, it's not affecting me yet. They've opened some bellies of fishes in the water and they've seen chunks of plastic, you know. At some point, different, you see different, um, what's it called, mammals dying as a result of, you know, um, what's it called, um, ocean, the, the issues that, um, that, that goes into the water and all of that. So, I mean, it's not something that we have to take lightly because, again, there is a balance, and every particular part of this our planet, the way God orchestrated it, it has its role. And if you yeah. abuse it, you know, would all suffer the consequences. I yeah. believe that some of the problems that we're even facing with earthquakes, uh, what's it called, volcanic eruption, uh, drought in some places, excessive rain in some places, fire in some places, and all of that, all these things are as a result of climate change, and it's because of the abuse of our climate. So I think for every opportunity that we get, let's just try you know, to keep yeah. our, our oceans clean and blue. Yeah, <laughs> blue planet after all. A very, very one. Okay, so who am I starting with? Jennifer, let me come to you. What's your story? So Tenny, the singer and artist, said that people should remove the female tag and that she's the best in the industry. Wow. So she um, she tweeted today saying, make on a commodity that female tag. We are artists and now we bad pass for everything. Stizo, musical, performance, everything. Call me anything way you won't call me. On a no say na me bad pass. Correct. <laughs> they are all good. Eh? In fact, I don't even know which one is bad anymore. All of them they are they are okay. You know, they, they, they <laughs> they are, okay. He called Bernard Boy that is the an, new cat. Is the new cat on the block. Oh my I saw one video of Bernard Boy bamboo. Like um, they showed a bamboo. Like struggling with a door that this is how Bernard Boy is gonna go to David Joy's house. <laughs> <laughs> All these artists eh, you will not you should just leave us, I think. But hey, it's, but they're all artists. Actually. Yeah, I mean, I get that. I think she she just doesn't want the segregation tag, yeah. where you say, oh, male artist, female because, artist. Because, again, you know, you know it's, it affects the pay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because they don't they don't pay you enough mm -hmm. as a female artist because they feel like, oh, men are better. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a male, um, mm -hmm. a male dominated. industry, dominated industry, that kind of thing. So I really get where she's, where she's coming from because sometimes on most of these artists, um, the women actually sing way better than some of these men and they pull in more crowd. But I mean, well, I'm not in the music industry, so I really no, cannot say. Boy, give it to him. I, I, I think, I think even, me, even now, me can bear. International stars, you know, they said he's, he, he you, broke history. And you, you know what I like about uh, um, Bona Boy, or what I'm liking about the artist, or what I'm learning as well is, um, is the confidence and belief in 
yourself. Hmm. Bonner Boy, I like Bonner Boy as an artist. I don't really know much about him as an individual. So when people are dragging him, you know, on different things he says, I'm like, if you listen to his song, there's there's some parts in lyrics where he's like, I'm the best and I know I'm the best. Hmm. Do you understand? Meaning confident. Yes, do you understand? Like what is good is good. Hmm. Or you, there's there's nothing you can do about it. You can you can actually even still have a bad character, but the talent is there. And he knows it, mm. and he he's he's he owns it. Say he owns it, mm. you know. And I'm just like, look, imagine if as an individual you believe in yourself, like, is is what you tell yourself you are that, that you would are. manifest. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Like, if you tell yourself I'm the greatest and the giant of Africa, you then no matter what, even when you're on the ground, people are saying you are really on the ground. You say no, I'm the giant of Africa. You really be the giant of Africa. Absolutely. So you know that's something I learned. You know. Okay. From, yeah. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> What's your story? <laughs> okay, so my story is on Apple, our favorite brand. I guess. Yeah. Yeah, so um, Apple has introduced the Vision Pro, a mixed reality headset. It's the company's most significant hardware innovation in years. The headset expected to be for sale early next year for $3,499 will give users a chance to connect to apps from Apple and others in an entirely new way. Apple CEO Tim Cook said the device, which blends virtual reality and augmented reality, is, a, is the first product you look through and not at. Augmented reality is a technology that allows users to overlay virtual images on live video of the real world. The eyesight feature makes the headsets look see-through allowing the wearer's eyes to be seen from the outside when someone else walks into the room because is this how the headset will look like yeah okay they they lost me um <laughs> <laughs> what's your story yeah they don't lose me obiko mm. even the one they did the the, the glasses was it yeah. google or which or facebook or it, it's oh. I think eventually... We'll, I'm not we'll, so we'll, much we'll of a tech it. freak like that. No, if you don't pass wristwatch and no, phone, leave me and laptop. imagine watching a movie mm. and it's enlarged. Okay. As opposed to, um, you know, having to buy a big TV screen. Like, you can have... Oh, I get you now. Yeah, you get... So, it's the same way with the, like, um, AirPods Max where... Mm. You, I mean, you're not going to be walking on the road with the big thing over your mm. head, you know, but then... Maybe you can be walking out and watching a movie, you know, in virtual reality. I think that would be amazing. Oh, okay. Yeah. You can I, think, I see the smile in your face. You're a, tech, <laughs> you're a gadget person. Even I'm not if you, really a gadget if you, person. If you Google, I think Google has this um, um, AR thing where you can actually Google an animal and then you want to see it in AR form. And then you can actually just place it somewhere. Mm. They have some furniture apps as well. Um, not in Nigeria. Ikea House and um, who else? I think Amazon also has that feature where um, you can just select a particular furniture. Say you're trying your you have a new apartment mm -hmm. and you're trying to put in so you cannot fit it into you your house yeah. oh yeah. to make right. it to make it so this will really be helpful for like yeah, uh, interior thing. businesses yeah. wow. so you just mm. fix it and you can fix a whole and dining see what it looks like house. before yes. you then go and purchase yes. it and oh. even while you're doing that you can change the color of the furniture hmm. to suit your apartment so you already have an idea okay i don't necessarily have to call anyone to do this you can also check measurements as well just measure your space put it mm. in there and basically just go online and then order the furniture down to your space and then I think everything this is the problem where i get so this is all these features will not level. be available in nigeria <laughs> but let us be seen now we are we not here it will, it will. okay let us see five <laughs> years it's going to be really expensive <laughs> Really expensive. What's you? Are you a gadget person too? But I like the, this uh, explanation Jennifer gave. Yeah, I mean, I, I am, but I mean, there's some gadgets that I don't understand why they have to be so expensive, particularly with this brand. They consistently. What's you? You're on your um, own. You, you've lost sorry? me. You are on your own. You've lost me. Don't go no, there. No, because I mean, come on. This is a gadget that is going for $3,500, right? The closest thing on the market, I mean, I think this combines AI and virtual reality. The closest thing on the market is about 300 and something dollars. I mean, as you can admit that 10%, something that is less than 10% of what is coming, it's a huge gap. And I know it's a niche market, but sometimes I just wonder if these prices, I mean, come on, but... To each their own, the Apple fans, I'm sure they'll be queuing on day one to buy it. 
Um, but I always just question those prices when I see them, particularly when, I mean, I just can't even explain, I can't justify it. But then, like I said, it's new technology, so I guess proprietary information, monies in R&D need, need to be reclaimed or, would I say, recouped. Anyway, moving on to my story. So my headline says, Jaffa, Nigeria lost many bright youth to other countries. And that is being, that was said by the outgoing House of Reps, um, outgoing Speaker of the House of Reps and of course incumbent Chief of Staff to the new President of the Federation. He was speaking at the valedictory session organized by the Ninth House um, in Abuja earlier. No, that was, this was yesterday. Um, so according to the speaker, um, youth have lost faith in Nigeria, choosing to seek their futures in other countries of the world. Um, and he's basically saying that both the executive and legislative arms of the government must act fast to avoid the Nigerians' bright youth exiting the country They've for Europe. So, <laughs> well, exactly. So that's one of the points, first of all, that, you know, people have been living in, the, living in their jurors for a couple of years now. Um, he did go on to say that despite the considerable investments um, that have been made into public infrastructure and numerous reforms, that um, we still face many challenges in the country, and that has caused the citizens to lose hope and to, to lose faith, rather, um, and to choose to find their fortunes in other lands. Now, why this story stood out for me, of course, this is a bit of a sore point for a lot of people, particularly the people who are here trying to fill the gaps that this, this brain drain um, is causing. We're definitely losing some of our best and brightest. So to hear someone who, I mean, has been within the auspices of the government, I believe since 2000 and, is it 2003? He's been House of Rep. I think he's been re-elected six times for his constituency. To be saying this, I'm like, please, what's all the time you were there? How did you help uh, the youth? Um, and we've gotten to this space, we've gotten to this point um, where we're now asking the question of how we restore faith in our young people so that many of them feel like they can achieve their aspirations here in Nigeria. The formula for me is simple. This is not the first time. Nigeria typically goes through this cycle of brain drain every, um, I want to almost say every generation because, I mean, the last time was probably like early 80s after SAP and, and uh, Babangida at the time. But then we also see that when Nigeria is thriving economically, when the environment is conducive, we also see that a lot of um, young people love Nigerians because we'd rather be home, really. That's the way I, I like to put it, right? So we saw the whole IJGB movement that was back around 2007, 2008, um, even earlier than that, really, um, where people were coming home when, you know, the, the telco sectors took off, when we had paid off our Paris Club debt and all of those things. So... The truth of it is that if our if our leaders and our politicians can get their act right, most Nigerian youth would rather be home in their spaces. So the fact that we've gotten to this point where people no longer trust the leadership, they no longer trust that Nigeria has their best interest at heart is quite distressing. So my final note really is that as he goes into this position as the chief of staff, working very closely with the president, that they do focus not just on hardcore governance, but really on um, building trust, on being transparent, on communicating, and commun not just communicating, but communicating effectively so that people hear the real message and people can start to believe um, and trust what is being said based on the validity of the actions that follow. If we take what has happened in the first few days of the administration, it doesn't seem like that's the direction that they're going in, but let's hope that... Um, they do better. Yeah, thank you, Uti, for that. I was just going to add that um, in case he doesn't know, um, I know a lot of people that were waiting for the outcome of the elections, and because a lot of the young people felt like these elections, there was a lot of things shrouded uh, that, that are shrouded the, the transparency of that election and the credibility of that election. People between um, the time that um, uh, the elections happened and when he was sworn in, a lot of people also have left the country. Yeah. Just because, you know what, I think I cannot deal. I kind of like waited for my PVC to, to you know, to yeah. let's see the outcome. Let, let this be like the final trial for some level of hope that, yeah. you know, for once we'll have leaders that are transparent and all of that. When they didn't see that. So 
thankfully i like your advice he's chief of staff now so whatever it is that you're doing let us just see transparency with the government yeah. it will help us and i think this just even ties nicely if they can pull out my video um peter obi was speaking on fuel subsidy mm. you know so let's just that's my story so we'll just take the video and you go to a dentist there's a difference between removing your tooth by applying anesthesia, which will aggravate your pain, and just pulling it out. The difference is that I believe it should be removed with conditions, and that condition has to be applied. If I was involved, I would have shown in empirical statistical data how much we are going to save, where we are going to apply it, the gains for the people, so they can, just like I said all throughout my campaign, that I'm going to govern the people by being open, showing them empirically verifiable facts on how the country can be better, and everybody can follow it. Yes, sir, That's yes. what I would have done. Yeah, a lot of persons are on the same page with you. I uh, agree that the subsidy should be removed. Yeah. But the impact that it's having on the masses especially is the reason why a lot of persons are in support or supposedly in support of protest. That's so what, what, but you have to give it to this man. And I think the reason I'm taking this story, right, there might be a lot of things that I think this government can learn from him. The reason he has this kind of cultic following from young people is this, is this statement he's just made. The fact that they know that, come to our very couple, I've said this thing, it's the same question Uti was asking the petroleum guy that came last week Friday. Can we even have an idea? What is the exact cost of the landing cost? If we do the math, and you tell me, I'm a businesswoman. If I buy products, I do a, sometimes I do a 40% markup, sometimes I do a 70% markup. It depends again on the rent. It's so many things, there are so yeah. many factors yeah. that, that, that adds up to the price of any commodity. Yeah. What we are asking for from our government is transparency. Do you understand? You can't just wake up and say, this is it. How did we arrive here? It's like we're not allowed to question things. And that's where we have a problem with the government over the years. Let's start to see government, you know, allow us the liberty to say, okay, you know what? I think, you know, I think, I think, because now we're seeing numbers. So you have to give it to Peter Obi. Call him whatever you want to say. You understand? He understands the language of the young people. He believes that, you know what? I can, they can hold me accountable because I can be transparent with them. And that's why till tomorrow, everybody just believes like he is the Messiah. Yeah. You understand? Even though for some of us that we know that truthfully, Nigeria does not need a Messiah. Nigeria needs more than a Messiah you know, to, to change the situation mm -hmm. because of the rot of the system. But please, I'm just trying to ask our government, the leaders in, in, in power now, try to take a cue. Try to, I mean, let Nigerians start to see some level of transparency, some level of honesty in your leadership. And you will see that the, the, the love and the, the whatever will just flow to you naturally. You don't need to bribe, you don't need to use money to get anybody's love and support. Mm. You know, who would have thought that somebody that said he did not have a penny to spend in an election, would even gather that kind of momentum that he did. So it is that we need honest leaders. We need transparent leaders. And we are just begging, you know, because as the situation is hard now, he was speaking to the fuel subsidy. You want to remove my teeth? You still need to put sedative there. You need to yeah. calm the thing before you remove the teeth. You can't just put, pull my teeth like that. Okay, true. Do you understand? Yeah. Well, he's borrowed, he's borrowed my butcher analogy from my the butcher. <laughs> now, yes, now it was your butcher, butcher analysis that he, he borrowed now. You want to, you want to, this, nobody says the teeth is decayed. Yeah. We need to take it out. It's a problem for me because if it stays there, I will die. Yeah. But you see, before you can remove it, you can't just wake up. Ah, the tooth is decayed. The tooth, you don't put pliers. Ah! You have to, first of all, sedate the place, yeah. prep the area, and say, okay, now the, the tooth is ready to be pulled out. Mm. Ah, I didn't think I would take this long on this matter. <laughs> on that note, please, I want to discuss flooding in this, in this our Nigeria state with us. So we'll be right back. <laughs>